In this video, we're going to talk about solutions of linear systems and talk about basic and free variables. So I have an example here, and it is a system with three variables where the last row is all zeros. So when we write this out, we have x1 plus 3x3 is equal to 2, and x2 plus 5x3 is equal to 6. Well, we can't really solve explicitly for these variables, because in both cases we have this x3 that kind of dangles along with it. So what we can do is we can solve for x1 and x2 in terms of a constant and another variable. So we can say that x1 is equal to 2 minus 3x3, and x2 is equal to 6 minus 5x3. So we have terms for these variables. x1 and x2 are called basic variables because they have solutions. x3 in this case is called a free variable because the number that we give to the free variable determines the value of the basic variables. So how do we write a solution for this? Well, our solution set we're always going to write x1, x2, x3. All of our variables will be listed. And in this case, x1 is going to be 2 minus 3x3. x2 is going to be 6 minus 5x3. But x3, we're going to write x3 is free. And this tells us that x1 and x2 and the other variables will change depending on what we assign x3 as. So what this means is that there's more than one solution set. Because if we pick x3 is equal to 0, then x1 is going to be 2, and x2 is going to be 6. But if we pick x3 is equal to 1, then x1 is going to be negative 1, and x2 is going to be 1. So we get these different solutions depending on what we assign our free variables. So let's do a full example here. We have x1 plus 4x2 plus 6x4 is equal to 0, x3 plus 7x4 is equal to 9, x5 is equal to 1. Okay, so let's take a look at some variables here. We have x4 showing up twice, we have an x2 here, and we have x1, x3, and x5. So x4 is going to be free, so what we can do is we can actually pick a variable to solve. So let's rewrite the first one in terms of x1. So x1 is going to be negative 4x2 minus 6x4. x3 is going to be 9 minus 7x4. And x5 is going to be 1. So we know x5 is equal to 1. x1 is negative 4x2 minus 6x4 x3 is 9 minus 7x4, and x2 is free. So you might be saying now, hold on a second, why is x2 free? Why isn't x1 free? And it's true, we can write the first line as x2 being dependent on x1, so we can do this and say, okay, well, 4x2 is equal to negative 6x4 minus x1, so we can say that x2 is negative 6 fourths x4 minus 1 fourth x1, and we can write that x1 is free and x2 is equal to this. So alternatively, we could say that x2 is equal to negative 3 half x4 minus 1 4 x1, and that x1 is free. This is completely up to you. So if you can do this, then it's okay. The reason that I chose x1 to be the basic variable in this case is because we're not dealing with fractions. The numbers are a little bit nicer. So when we plug in values of x2 and x4, because they're free values, it's a little bit easier to determine what x1 is. But in the second case where we have x2 dependent on x4 and x1, uh, the numbers can come out a little bit more confusing. They have the same solution sets, so x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 will all have the same assignments, regardless of which one we pick as being free, but 
it might be a little bit more difficult to get them if you're doing it by hand, with x2 equal to negative 3 over 2x4 minus 1 fourth x1. So here's a theorem that I've been leaving for a while. We've discussed it in the practice question video, but a linear system is consistent if the rightmost column is not a pivot column. So what does this mean? That means that we don't have any columns where there's a bunch of zeros and then a number in the last one. Why is this? Because this says that 0x1 plus 0x2 plus all the way up to 0xn is equal to some number b, which means that 0 is equal to b. And if we're saying 0 is equal to some number that's not 0, clearly something went wrong. So this is a very important theorem when looking at inconsistence. Now, what do I mean by a pivot column? What is a pivot column? A pivot column means that we have a pivot position in that column. So if we have a bunch of zeros and the very last one is B in an augmented matrix and we say this is a pivot, this means that there are no zeros before it. That's all that means. So if there's no zeros before, or if there's all zeros before it, then if this last number is not a zero, it's going to be inconsistent. So that is a pivot column. A pivot column is any column that has a pivot position. So as an example, suppose I have a matrix that looks like this. 0, 0, 0, 1, 6. And I ask you, which are the pivot columns? Well, there's a pivot position here, a pivot position here, and a pivot position here. So that means that these three rows are pivot columns because they have a pivot position. So that's what a pivot column is. So that theorem is pretty important for figuring out if your system is inconsistent or not, and you can do it really quickly without actually solving a whole system. So let's find the solution set here. We talked about solution sets, we talked about pivot columns and inconsistent solution sets. So let's see if this is consistent and if it is, what are variables equal to? So let's take row one, or sorry, let's take row two, and we're going to take row two plus two of row one, so we can get rid of that negative two there. So our first row is going to remain untouched, and we're gonna add two of the first row. So negative two plus two is zero, four plus four is eight, five minus two is three, six plus eight is going to be 14. Okay, now at this point, do we want to get rid of the eight? Do we want to get rid of the two? What should we do here? Well, I am going to take the first row and add a quarter. I guess we don't even have to go that far. In fact, let's save ourselves some time and just write it out as follows. We have x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 is equal to 4, and we have 8x2 minus 3x3 is equal to 14. So maybe we could go one step further. Maybe that'd be nice. Let's take the first row and add a quarter of the second row. So this is something I generally like to avoid, but we're going to take row one, and so we're going to subtract one quarter of row two. This can get a little bit difficult with fractions. So one minus zero is one. Two minus eight over two is two minus two, which is zero. Negative one minus three quarters is negative seven fourths, and four minus 14 over 4 is negative, sorry, is 16 over 4 minus 14 over 4 is 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Okay, then the second column will remain untouched. So this is a little bit nicer now. 
It's not nice because of the numbers, but it's nice because now we have x1 and x2 separated from each other, and then we have x3s, which can be free. So here we have x1 minus 7 quarters x3 is equal to 1 half. So we can rewrite this as x1 is equal to 1 half plus 7 for x3. We have 8x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 14, which we can rewrite as x2 is equal to 14 over 8 minus 3 eighths x3, and then we have x3 is free. And that is the solution set to the matrix above. Again, it's not very nice, but it's good to have examples in a video where the numbers aren't nice because this can happen on exams, and really sucks when it happens because if you don't have calculators, you might make a mistake, but the process is there. This is the final solution set. You can check these numbers to make sure they work, and they should. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll answer them as quickly as I possibly can. If you can share this wherever you want, if this helped you, that would be awesome for me and help me out a lot.